If I was to use one word about what's, what we're living today with Ebola, I would say unprecedented. Everything about this disease and the way it unrolls and the epidemics in West Africa is of the global concern, and it's really something that's never happened before. Ebola was first uh, noticed and diagnosed in 1976 in a small outbreak in Africa, and then the outbreaks continued. They've never came to the size of what we are witnessing today. The UN Security Council has met for the second time in history on the public health issue, and it has launched a UN mission for the response for Ebola emergency. And it also mentioned that Ebola outbreak is the threat to international health and security. The WHO has called for an acceleration of the emergency response to the outbreak. What is the current state of interventions? WHO is repeatedly saying, uh, talking about the deployment of the vaccine after the first studies in, in humans have shown safety and after the data in non-human primates in monkeys has been shown very positive. There is a number of data available in um, animals, but there is nothing really been tested in humans. So this is something that will have to be brought forward, putting together clinical trials that both answering the needs of generating the data of safety and efficacy that is credible and at the same time on addressing the ethical aspects of moving forward. One presentation that was really striking was from Metzan Sans Frontier, who showed the work that they are doing in the affected countries in trying to really treat the patients and make sure that they increase the survival rates. They have to take patients even if they cannot cure them, just simply not letting them die outside of the hospital. They are doing, again, an unprecedented work in trying to help the communities there and make sure that they give this chance, these patients higher chances to survive without the treatments being available. What is the role of the pharmaceutical industry, including Johnson & Johnson's Crucell, in supporting efforts to control the epidemic? What are the challenges being faced? Crucell is a part of the Janssen pharmaceutical companies of Johnson & Johnson, and it's been working on the two fronts. First, we were providing the humanitarian relief to the countries affected. And on the other side, we just embarked on an accelerated program of developing an Ebola vaccine. What we have decided then, because of the current unprecedented outbreak, is to accelerate this development and take only part of this vaccine to be brought forward, which could be done much faster than originally planned. This acceleration is unprecedented on the side of the manufacturer, and also it will be unprecedented on the side of the regulators that will have to review the protocols, the trials, and the ethics, uh, the ethic experts as well, to make sure that we're doing the right thing. We need to make something that will be sustainable, that would be used. So for the vaccines that are prophylactic, you need to make sure that you have a targeted group that you will actually be able to vaccinate and you'll actually be able to make a difference. So the WHO has made a very clear statement that the first category to be vaccinated would be healthcare workers because they are coming in the first contact with the patient. What are the main existing challenges faced by the international community during this Ebola outbreak? These challenges are, I would say, three. One is uh, coordination and the coordination of efforts of all stakeholders. Nobody can make anything by themselves or alone in this space. You have to collaborate and the strength of partnerships and collaboration has to be at the highest speed possible. This is something that we've never lived through before. Another issue would be harmonization. And that is how do we make sure that we don't repeat things twice, because we do not have time to do that. So we need to make sure that everything that we are developing, everything that we are delivering, is harmonized across as many areas as possible. And finally, communication. Because so far, we haven't been giving signals of hope to the people and to communities. And that by WHO was considered as one of the major flaws in the first response to the epidemics. And it's very important to make sure that we give messages of hope to the people and messages that we are going to do something about it. The world is there for you. You're not alone.